Yo, what's up, dude? You're back in today, NFL Week 9 Waiver Wire. Surely you're 5-3 and three or better in your fantasy league. And uh, the waiver wires are getting slim, you would think. But there's actually a solid couple of options this week. And then we're also going to go through some defenses this week as well because there is a couple solid options, but not as many as usual. So defenses should be on the rise for who you're adding to your waiver wire claims for Wednesday night waivers. Now, first, we're going to talk about some of the names. We'll do some stat breakdowns on some of the big heavy guys. Smash the like and subscribe button if you want to see more. Really helps the channel out a ton. First guy to talk about here, Isaac Garendo. 8% roster. He's available. Now, uh-oh, Mr. Garendo has a bye week. He also hasn't done anything all year long until last night. You know, this guy's a rookie, came in, hasn't done anything. He's the backup to McCaffrey. He's Jordan Mason's backup. Now Jordan Mason exited with an injury, but McCaffrey's going to be back after the bye week, supposedly. McCaffrey's practicing during the bye week for the first time. Uh, you know, he should be available for the game in week 10. 49ers are on bye week. McCaffrey, you have to think that they're going to ease him back in. If Jordan Mason has a serious long-term injury, that means Garendo could potentially have like a 60-40 split with Christian McCaffrey, one of the best offenses in the league. I'm not super excited about this guy. You know, if anything... He's like a he's a flex play that you're not going to be happy about in week number ten. But a lot of people might not have the running back depth, and it might be something you can you can consider. Looking here, I mean, he has had two solid games. The efficiency is really good: 9.9 .9 yards per carry a couple times back, and 6.1 a uh, yesterday. So I mean, those are both very very solid options right there in terms of in terms of a rushing efficiency. Looking good. He had a 76 yard run this game, which obviously bolstered it. Last night it was just really six yards per carry, chipping away at the Cowboys' lackluster defense. And then interestingly enough, he got involved in the receiving game, which is good. Three catches, 17 yards. No, he did have the rushing touchdown as well. So he had a really really solid fantasy uh, fantasy type performance in week number eight. Can he repeat that? Obviously, he has a bye week. And then looking at his next up and coming opponents, Tampa Bay, Seattle, it's not too exciting, but he is somebody where you can potentially have him as a running back in the future. Looking at the next name on here, we have Cedric Tillman. Now, Cedric Tillman, guys, this is a guy where he broke onto the scene. Now, you would think that with Jameis Winston, you would think that, you know what? Jameis Winston, he's been good in the past, but he's going to throw a bunch of interceptions. He's not going to be that guy. Cedric Tillman had himself a day, 19% rostered. He's got to be rostered in your league. He's a priority waiver wire ad. Back-to-back -back weeks with Jameis Winston, and Cedric Tillman has been getting a lot more looks than Jerry Judy, uh, and Elijah Moore is even getting more looks than Jerry Judy. So it looks like Tillman might be the number one in this offense. Look at it. Look at it. 8 for 12, 7 for 9. Two tutties in a tough game against the Baltimore Ravens. So, I mean, Cedric Tillman, he, this is my number one. Waiver wire, he's going to be a flex play. He already is. He's a flex play moving forward. Keep in mind he has the bye week, which kind of sucks, uh, but he he's somebody that you're going to want to roster for sure. Looks like the number one receiver on the Cleveland Browns, who maybe they're heading in the right direction. Keon Cole was another guy right here. You know, he, he's also a guy that should be on rosters. He's already on a lot of rosters, which is why I'm not going to be going too crazy about him. But he has had, I'm pretty sure, back-to-back -back good performances. Yeah, so back-to-back -back seven target performances. He does have some touchdowns on the season. Obviously, recorded another one on uh, the Sunday of week number eight, which was good. 70 yards, 125 yards. The receiving targets are improving. The receiving yards are improving. He's involved in this Bills offense now. It seems like with uh, Amari Cooper, who only had one catch in week number eight, it looks like Amari Cooper, Khalil Shakir, who was insane, he had like 20 points, and then also Keon Coleman had the touchdown, which had a nice day for him. It looks like the three of them, it's going to be kind of hard to choose which receiver is going to have the big day, making them all kind of borderline flex plays. Obviously, Amari Cooper is the one you're going to want to start moving forwards, uh, more than likely. It's kind of like the Packers receiving room. I'm not too excited, especially with Josh Allen, what he can do with his legs. Is it going to be a pass-heavy offense? I don't know. Now we have some names I want to talk about. Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry's a big one, man. If Hunter Henry's available in your league, go ahead and add him. Haven't had too many great tight end performances throughout the season, but it seems like Laporta's back. Pitts might be back. Looking at Henry's last couple of games. Really, really solid. I mean, 7.1 right here, plus the touchdown, 13. 17 right here. Uh, you know, close to 10 in week number eight. Now, if Drake May is out and if Jacoby Brissett's starting, you know, obviously Drake May is in the concussion protocol, cancel the waiver wire. You don't need Hunter Henry. But it seems like he can be like a, a decent, you know, 
low end tight end one, mid tight end two type player. He's a good waiver wire addition. Similarly with Zach Ertz. Now I'm assuming Zach Ertz is probably wavered as well, but he is Jaden Daniels kind of security blanket. He is kind of that guy that Jaden Daniels can throw him, throw up to him in the middle of the field, getting a lot of looks. I mean, 8, 5, 5, 11 for the targets. Obviously a high end targets right here with 11. And then he had seven catches for 77 yards. He had 40 yards. He had 68 yards. This is a guy who's been having that decent receiving role in the middle of the field. He only has one touchdown in the last couple of games, which isn't terrible. You know, it's all right. It's not the best. But in games where it seems like, you know, the commanders have been dominating. In a closer environment, closer game, 11. 11 targets. Not shabby at all. I think Zach Ertz is a low, you know, a high-end tight end too moving forward. Mike Gizeki. I wanted to mention Mr. Gizeki because he had seven catches, 73 yards. Happy National Tight End Day. Now, T. Higgins was out. If T. Higgins is out, maybe, you know, Mike Gizeki is a low-end tight end too. You're not going to want to use Mike Gizeki moving forward. Don't waste the waiver claim. The reason being, you know, if you look at the snap data and the route the routes run, he honestly wasn't even out there running routes, you know, nearly as much as you would think with T. Higgins out, so go ahead and pass on him. Jameis Winston's going to be a guy worth a ad. Winston threw for 334 yards, three tutties, and he looked good. Now, if you're going to go ahead and start Winston, you might be crazy. And, uh, you know, they have a bye week coming up, I believe. We just talked with Cedric Tillman. You know, with Jameis Winston, you're going to be on a roller coaster. Mm, it's all right. Similarly with Bo Nix. Bo Nix had four touchdowns, three passing, one rushing versus a trash Carolina Panthers team. QB three overall in the last four weeks. That's solid. He's having some rushing numbers helping him. Bo Nix and Jameis Winston both should be rostered. Josh Downs, he's rostered in about half of the league, so I'm not going to spend too much time here. Josh Downs, it's going to be hard to predict when he has those big games, but it seems like he's the number one Colts receiver with Anthony Richardson. Pittman with the back injury and with the trash quarterback of Richardson who's too tired to even play on third down and third down and goal. You know, <laughs> embarrassing. But Josh Downs worth the roster spot for sure. Borderline flex play. Low end flex play every single week. And here's some of the handcuffs. I think this website did a really good job. So good luck. Big ups, Joe, uh, with this nice list right here for some premium handcuff type running backs. You know, guys, you're not going to be too exciting about. Now, looking at the defenses, the Patriots, not rostered by a lot of people against the Titans. Now, the Titans, I mean, the Titans, honestly, they, Calvin Ridley had a day. He had 100 first quarter receiving yards against the Lions. So I'm not too excited if I had this Patriots defense, but it's going to be, you know, it'll probably, it'll be, it'll be projected about six points. It'll be better than, uh, better than some of these other ones. The Saints versus the Panthers. Panthers, if you can get anyone against the Panthers, you're in a good spot. But, you know, the Saints defense has been kind of lackluster this season. The Bengals, they play the Las Vegas Raiders. The Chiefs, I mean, the Chiefs defense is just really, really good. The things that Spagnuolo is doing over there, I mean, I don't know if the Chiefs defense is good or the Chiefs DC is good. I don't know what it is. They just destroyed the Raiders uh, offensively. They had a couple of goal line stands on turnovers and whatnot. The Bengals defense has been a bit lackluster, so it's a bit concerning. But I think the Bengals, they could be all right uh, here against the Raiders and kind of a rebound defensive game. My favorite, though, is the Commanders defense against the Giants. Uh, the, the New York Giants, we haven't seen, I haven't seen them yet on Monday Night Football, but I think that they could get a couple sacks against Dan, Danny Dimes, Daniel Jones, maybe a few turnovers. And I mean, looking at it, Daniel Jones was sacked eight times against the Eagles. So I think the Commanders could be a really, really solid option. Caleb Williams looked like trash. He had like 15, 15, 20 passing yards, you know, in a couple quarters of football. Really, really bad until the fourth quarter there with that quote unquote game winning drive before the Hail Mary. The Cardinals versus the Bears, not a bad option either. The Titans versus the Patriots, I do like that as well. You know, the Patriots, especially with no Jacoby Brissett, you know, the Patriots are not going to be scoring more than 20 points in week number nine. Those are all the fantasy wire, waiver wire editions I want to talk about in week number nine. Tell me down below who you adding, got any questions, any trade questions. Smash the like and subscribe button. Peace out. Thanks for watching.